How's it going guys? I'm Cameron with Race Pack and uh, we're back here for week number three of our uh, Facebook uh, Wednesday webinars. Uh, we uh, Today we're going to actually be talking about the IQ3 drag logger dash that uh, we've come out with for a lot of the sportsman guys. Um, it's just me today. Um, uh, Todd filled in for me last week so I could go play uh, in a funny car and uh, now he's on vacation. So, um, But I'd like to thank him for doing that for me last week. Uh, I greatly appreciate it. We had a lot of fun out there. Um, but uh, anywho, uh, just uh, wanted to start off by telling you guys a little bit about, I know we discussed this in week one about, you know, what the IQ3 drag dash is, but uh, just a little more, little quick overview for you. Uh, the IQ3 drag dash was designed and manufactured for uh, super category racers uh, along with uh, uh, bracket racers and stock, illuminator, anything you know, that type of, you know, battery ignition type of vehicle. So, you know, if you're racing super comp, super gas, stock illuminator, even top dragster, if you're not running a magneto, um, if you're running like a nitrous application or something like that. Um, but uh, basically eliminates all the, the analog gauges out of your vehicle um, and also has a built-in data logger in it. Um, it's all records to an SD memory card, uh, a little micro SD memory card pops out uh, out of the front of the dash and you stick that uh, into your laptop just like you would any digital camera. Um, to, the download procedure is super basic, uh, but uh, what we'll do is we'll run through a few things uh, about the dash itself, uh, how to set it up, and, and kind of go from there. So first things first, when you first get the IQ3 drag dash, it's going to look like this. Uh, we'll have the part number right here that says drag dash. We offer a bunch of different IQ3s. So we get a lot of calls that say, hey, I want the IQ3, um, and we always ask, well, what is it for? Well, this is why, because we have so many different options that uh, you can choose from. But this particular one is made for drag racing, and uh, let's, let's tear it open and see what we got in here. So first of all, when you open up the, the box, you're going to see a bunch of pamphlets that uh, most people throw away, but I'm here to recommend that uh, you hang on to these. Um, Race pack pays contingency. Uh, you're going to get a couple contingency decals in the box. Uh, you can put these on your car. If you win a national uh, or runner up, you get paid. So uh, throw those on your car. Uh, next thing we got in here is uh, our race pack YouTube uh, race pack media page. Uh, there's hundreds of videos on there that uh, actually have uh, tutorials, tips, tricks, uh, anything from how to download a run to, you know, lifestyle events that we do and a bunch of good stuff on there so check that out that's race pack media on youtube uh last thing as far as paperwork that's going to come in here is something that you want to definitely hang on to this is the only uh printed version of instructions that uh, we give you with the iq3 drag dash uh, everything else is on a usb stick but this is a quick reference guide that will actually kind of run you through the basic setups and you know how to download a run and all that stuff if you guys get stuck but definitely hang on to this put it in your trailer put it uh, in the toolbox something um, and you're also going to need it for when you uh, actually install the the unit as well because it has the the pinout and everything for the back of the connector etc so we'll leave that right here because we're probably going to reference that in a minute so as we go through here you're going to get a bunch of little baggies and i'll basically just kind of walk through each little baggie uh, the the blue bag um, is an important one because inside here we have uh, it houses a USB stick. This USB stick actually houses all of the software, manuals, and configurations that you're going to need to use your IQ3 drag dash. Uh, the Datalink 2 software is the program that we use for you know downloading and using anything race pack related and it's all right here on this this uh, USB stick. So this is an important piece. You don't want to lose it. If you do lose it, you can always download our software at racepack.com as well. But another thing that you might want to keep in your trailer, just in case. So um, we'll, we'll discuss a little bit more about that as we go when we get to the laptop portion. Uh, next thing we have in here is we're going to have a yellow bag that houses uh, your drive shaft sensor. Uh, your drive shaft sensor, obviously, uh, there's going to be a ring that goes on uh, your yoke and your third member. and uh, uh, this particular deal uh, it's going to have a bracket that comes in the kit as well. We'll talk about that in a second. It's going to hold your sensor. It counts a couple magnets that uh, spins around on the shaft, and that's how you pick up drive shaft RPM. Um, it's already terminated for you, um, so it's just a matter of plug and play. Uh, inside this little baggie, there's a little card that kind of talks about uh, the gap 
and uh, the yellow portion of the magnet. We get a lot of calls and people ask, uh, I got my drive shaft sensor, but there's a yellow, a yellow magnet on one side and it's bare on the other. What is this for? This magnet is actually a test magnet that uh, another thing you can stick in your trailer for for a quick reference. Uh, there's a lot of people that use different collars like Strange, Mark Williams, you know, that don't use our particular collars, uh, which is fine. Uh, you just have to make sure that the polarity is correct when you do that. Um, some of the collars out there, the magnets can get put in backwards and all that stuff and it, uh, it can cause your drive shaft RPM not to work. Um, for reference, Whenever you use one of these and you're using a race pack collar or the race pack polarity, you would want to stick this on the collar itself and you'll always want to see yellow. Um, if it flips over and you don't see the yellow portion and it sticks on the collar, that, uh, that means that the magnet is in backwards and you'll need to flip it around. So um, just a quick little run through on uh, your drive shaft sensor baggie. And uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, you got a programming cable. Uh, this programming cable is a USB on our new drag dash stuff. Uh, no, uh, no more using USB to serial adapter. Uh, it's just a uh, micro USB to USB. Uh, this deal, um, you can leave it plugged in the back of the dash. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, just only use this when you're doing programming. Um, that's basically if you're adding or removing a VNet sensor, if you're you know, doing some programming, you want to change something in the settings, or this is what you'll need. So you'll want to keep this in the trailer as well. This this cable will allow you to talk to your laptop, to your data logger, and vice versa. Let's see. Next, we have a micro SD card adapter and SD card reader. A lot of computers these days have built-in SD card readers, and you're more than welcome to use those. Um, sometimes they don't have a micro SD chip in there that uh, allows you to do the little micro ones for the drag dash. Um, so we include one for you. Our particular one has a slot for the standard size and the micro, but uh, you just pop the cap off and stick it into uh, a USB port on your computer. But um, it also comes with the adapter if you want to use the normal one. Um, this is all um, just a standard deal. You can get this at Walmart anywhere, uh, but we just include it there for you. Just uh, as an added feature. Uh, the actual SD card that will go into your data logger is in the adapter when you get the box. Um, they're so small that uh, a lot of times we don't like to put them in the actual dash itself. We like to seal them in a bag so we know that we make sure you guys get them. So uh, moving right along, uh, we have one more bag in here before we get to the harness and the dash itself. The final little baggie, there's all kinds of goodies in here. We'll talk about a few of them right quick. Uh, first things first, we have a couple buttons. These buttons themselves are uh, the way that you're going to, one, initiate the recording on your data logger. Uh, there's a, a wire in the harness that's already pre-made for a record button. A lot of guys mount this in their dash, uh, on their steering wheel, or on the back of the car if you have a crew member that prefers to, that prefers to push the button. The other button is actually to toggle through the pages. An IQ3 drag dash has four pages of inputs. Um, which allows you to monitor over 20 things just in display mode on the dash itself. It can record more than that, obviously, but uh, the actual button itself, uh, you can toggle through the four pages. So say if you had, you know, pan vac, oil, water, fuel, you know, et cetera, and you fill out the first page and you just toggle, push the button and it goes to the second page, third, et cetera, et cetera. If you don't, if you don't run any additional pages, uh, like two, three, and four, and, uh, you know, you don't use that, you don't technically have to use it to use the unit, but if you're, most guys wire it in because they're gonna end up adding something later on in the future. Uh, we have the little electrical connectors that will go on the other end of the harness uh, for you after you trim to fit. Uh, these are just any hardware store style connector, uh, super easy, super basic to crimp. Um, most racers kinda already know what these are and like I said, they just slide right on and click right into the button. Really easy wiring. Uh, we also have a water temperature sensor. Um, this sensor, it's really easy to plug in. It just literally clicks into our harness as well. Um, you can't mess it up, it's keyed for you. Um, it's eighth inch pipe thread, so you can just screw it into your manifold or you know water neck or whatever it is that you're picking up. Um, some people use these same sensors for trans temp, et cetera, but this particular one is set up for water temperature, any sort of fluid temperature. But the harness is already made for it, so it's, it's really easy to wire. Little Teflon tape, 
eighth inch pipe thread hole in your manifold or your water neck, screw it in, and then when you're ready to run your harness, you just click that sucker right in. Uh, same thing we have with uh, the oil pressure sensor. Uh, this is a race pack oil pressure sensor that uh, we've come out with. Um, the Packard style connector on, on the sensor itself, the mating end is already built into the harness as well. Uh, it's just a matter of clicking that sucker right in there, super easy. It's also eighth inch pipe thread. Uh, most people put this on, uh, you know, somebody, like on the block they have uh, an eighth inch pipe thread hole, you know, where the filter is, or they run a line, a piece of braided line, anything that, uh, you know, you're gonna pump through and you wanna get some oil pressure. This particular sensor is a zero to 150, 150 PSI sensor. Um, if you're running anything higher than that, we'd recommend getting a different one, but most bracket cars or cars that the uh, drag dash would actually be in, it would uh, this will be just sufficient for you. So it shouldn't be an issue at all. Um, these are a new style sensor that we've come out with and uh, they seem to be doing a, a lot better than our older brass style ones that we used to have that were single wire and they, um, they weren't as reliable, so we wanted to step it up a little bit for you guys for the drag dash and kind of give you a little more bang for your buck. Um, we got two more things in this one little pack. Uh, this is the drive shaft sensor bracket. This will bolt onto your third member, like on the pumpkin, and you have an adjustment here to slide. This, the sensor itself is going to go right into the side of the bracket, and then you can just align it with your where your collar is mounted, etc. cetera. Um, the gap in between the sensor and the collar itself that this is gonna mate up to, uh, you want about 60 to 80 thousandths. Um, if you can't get a feeler gauge in there for whatever reason, you can't get your hand up there or whatever, usually screw it in all the way till it touches and then uh, back it off like a turn and a half is usually just fine. Now, something to keep in mind when you're doing this, do not over tighten the drive shaft sensor. They are hollowed out and filled with porcelain. So if you uh, get a torque wrench out, you're probably gonna snap the sensor. It just needs to be snug. Uh, no, uh, no torque wrenches, no over tightening, no dual wrenches, anything like that. Just a little, just snug it up and it usually stays in the, the right place. So nothing too crazy. And then finally, in our uh, bag of goodies here, you're gonna get, uh, let me put this away real quick. You're gonna get three basically studs that look like little pieces of all thread uh, with a Allen key on the top and some nuts. This is how you mount the IQ3 itself uh, into your mounting plate, your dash, wherever it's gonna be. Um, there's little holes that are already pre-drilled pre and pre-sunk in the, the housing itself. Uh, these just screw right in. Obviously, the nuts, you put the dash on and the nuts go straight in after that. Um, it doesn't have to be super tight or anything like that either, just as long as you know they're not going to fall off. There's some, there's some washers in there to help you uh, with tightening as well. So, um, after all the accessories that uh, some, some people like me uh, open up the bag and they fall all over the garage floor, um, and you have to, after you're done chasing those, uh, we have the main harness in here. So the main harness for the IQ3 drag dash is, it looks a little intimidating, I guess, when you when you first take it out of the box because it just looks like a big hunk of wires, but once you untwist it, it's really basic. So basically this big connector here is, is the brains of the operation, what's just gonna connect into the back of the IQ3 drag dash. This houses everything. It houses uh, the power to the unit, you know, power and ground, uh, oil pressure, water temperature, your button stuff, you know, your record button, your tack input, etc. So um, <clears throat> that's, that side's already done for you. Um, and pretty much everything's already terminated except for some of the wiring that you'll need to put like a ring terminal on for power and ground, etc. So like I stated before, um, here's a sample of the oil pressure sensor connector. It's already terminated. You don't have to do anything. It just run it to your engine compartment and click the sensor in and off you go. Uh, we have same thing with water temperature here. Um, this is, uh, you know, the just spring loaded, just click the temperature sensor in there. And same thing with drive shaft, it's already all pre-terminated as well. We do the pre-termination thing now because a lot of people um, didn't like having to crimp. Like with the Sportsman, you have to crimp, you used to have to crimp all the connectors on yourself. Um, but if this seems to be too long for you and you feel okay with shortening them, that's totally fine. You just have to call us and get the mating connector and you can cut it and 
it, crimp it yourself. Uh, if you have the the correct crimpers, you know, like the MSD style barrel crimpers, it's it's pretty easy to, to crimp. But we like to do it for you, so we know that it works from the factory. And uh, if you just have a little excess wiring, you can just coil it up and you know tuck it underneath the frame rail or something. Um, as it gets kind of thinner, this that's kind of the bulk of the harness. But um, you have the power and ground. This is uh, it comes pre-fused um, with a, just a regular automotive style uh, five amp fuse. Uh, a lot of people I see in the field cut these off. I really don't recommend cutting off the fused portion of how you're wiring this stuff. Um, anytime you have you know, electricity and you hook it up to a battery charger or something, it could shock it and, and cause it to fry it and it's an electronical component. So I would rather uh, break a couple cent fuse than, uh, than a data logger and have to send it back. So uh, we highly recommend still using this. It's just a five amp fuse. Uh, if you're popping the five amp fuse, do not go and put a 25 amp fuse in there and thinking that, oh, that's gonna solve the problem. Uh, I've seen that quite a lot, but uh, if you're popping five amp fuses on the race pack, you probably have some other wiring issue that uh, you may wanna double check and scope out. So it's got a little mount, mount stud for you really easy there. Uh, the rest of these wires, you have uh, you have a tack, you have a tack wire, you got a ground. Um, you also have the record button and then in here as well, a lot of the super category guys might not use it, but some of the uh, outlaw guys like the streetcar guys, they run EFI systems these days. Um, we've now, uh, a lot of our guys run uh, our interface modules, like say for instance, if you have a Holly Dominator or Motec or Fast or you know, one of their XFI, fast XFIs. We have an interface module that uh, will click right into the harness. You just literally buy the adapter. They range from about 50 to 75 bucks, depending on which one it is. You click it on there and it'll stream up to 20 channels, depending on what the EFI system is allowing us to stream. Now, those channels do not count as any of our VNet stuff. So um, they're kind of freebies if you, per, you know, if you have EFI and you're using it, you know, and you can stream all that stuff and it's not gonna take up any of your expandability on the VNet side, which is pretty cool. Um, but like I said, a lot of the super category guys, uh, you know, won't use it, which, but you can actually, if you, if you really hated it, the tail is only six inches long, but if you really hated it and you wanted to have a super, super clean install, you can, these connectors are really easy to pop open. You just, you click little tang and, and pull the wire out and lock it back down. Super easy. Um, but that's pretty much a quick little run through the harness. It's, uh, uh, like I said, it looks intimidating when you first pull it out, but once you kind of start diagnosing it, it it, uh, it doesn't look too bad. So if I can wire it, pretty much anybody can wire it. So, um, and then we basically have the dash itself. So um, this is the IQ3 drag dash. Um, we use the same housing for a lot of our different IQ3s. We have, I think we have like eight different uh, actual IQ3 versions itself. Um, but this particular one, um, it'll, it'll be signified with the IQ3 drag sticker. And then also it has the, uh, a lot of times if you have a display, this will be covered up, but this is where the micro SD card is going to live right here in this little, this little front mounting uh, slot there. So that way you don't have to reach under the dash or anything like that. If you had an external data logger, that's kind of the advantage of having a drag dash built all built into one because it's all right there. You just boom, and when you get out of the car, pull the chip and into the trailer you go. It makes it a lot easier. Um, but uh, it also has uh, some warning lights that we'll talk about in a minute as well. Um, you got some LED shift lights here along the top. Uh, this is all user programmable. The warning lights are programmed along with uh, the shift lights. That's all. We set some of it up for you uh, just because, you know, everybody's going to kind of usually want to know uh, high water temp and low oil pressure, but um, you can add more to it, more parameters, change the values of, you know, what PSI you want your light to come on, etc. So uh, that's a really cool feature. Um, let's flip it over to the back here and uh, talk about the back a little bit. Those mounting studs I was talking about that come in a little baggy, um, they mount here like a little triangle deal. Uh, you just literally screw them right into, uh, into the back of the dash and you know, um, in our manuals, um, you can actually print and you can do it off the website or you can do it off our manuals in the USB stick. There's a template that you can print out. Um, if you don't want to eyeball it and you don't want to measure or whatever, just print the template out. Uh, everything will be lined up. 
something to keep in mind with printing. Uh, we get a lot of people calling and saying that our template is not the same as the back of the dash. Well, you have to make sure your printer is printing is scaled one to one. A lot of printers actually will shrink uh, templates and things like that to make it fit on a certain a certain page or whatever, like you know, fit to page or whatever. Just make sure your printer is one to one if you're going to print that and use that because we don't want you drilling holes in the wrong spot. Um, but uh, let's see what we got here. From from there, um, we have uh, the programming. We talked about the programming cable. There's a little cap that covers it, uh, but this is where the programming cable is going to live. Um, you stick it in there, and that's how you're going to talk from your dash to your laptop. Pretty basic there, but when you're not using it, it's just a little dust cover that can go on there. The big connector in the center, obviously you guys, I'm assuming, can figure that out. Um, that's where the main power harness goes uh, that houses everything um, you know, to, for your basic unit. Um, and then next to it, we have uh, our VNet expansion port. Uh, a lot of people... Uh, always wonder like what is our what are all those blue blocks we see in race cars or whatever with a bunch of wires well that's what we call our vnet can bus um, it's something that uh, race pack invented uh, we didn't invent can but we developed our own vnet version of it which um, allows you to snap a bunch of different sensors in a system and run it off of one main line so basically what we would do i meant to grab one but I forgot but so if you wanted to add let's just say a pan vacuum a trans temp a carb pressure and let's say an air fuel and you want you need to plug all that into the back of your dash well instead of running you know all these cables and wires up into your dash the cool thing is you can run one vnet extension cable from the back of your dash to your engine compartment and snap all that stuff into one one cable and it runs one all that information right into the back of the dash without having to stream everything or string everything to your dash it's kind of cool it's a lot of information going through just one little one little port, so kind of makes it easier, wiring cleaner, faster, etc. Um, I guess the easiest way to explain it would be uh, each little module, the little blue VNet modules. Um, they all have their own little addresses and codes. Uh, imagine those codes being an address to your house, and you're driving down your street in your in your you know neighborhood, and each house has an address. Every time the car drives by, or shall we say the dash sends a signal. Uh, it sends a signal to it and it says, oh, I see that and I need to record it. So as you drive by, it picks up all that information and that happens at up to 50 samples a second. So a lot of data streaming over one cable, but it gets uh, fast information all going to the right spot to your SD card so you can download it and, and analyze it from there. So, but when you do that, something to keep in mind, this little cap, this isn't just a dust cap, there's little pins in here that uh, they're actually terminating resistors. So whenever you're at the end of your line on your VNet stuff, always make sure you put your cap on the end because that's at the end of the line, it tells you, oh, it sends the signal out and says, oh man, I you know, I don't see anything else and it hits this and it tells it to turn around and come back and, and start the writing process onto the card. So always wanna keep this, uh, you know, if you're not using the VNet, just leave it capped on the back of the dash. But uh, if you're adding anything, just make sure that the terminator cap is always at the end of the line. So um, that's basically a quick little run through. So what we can do is from here, we can kind of talk a little bit about the, the software portion of this stuff. Um, get stuff out of the way here. So when you get your, when you get your data logger and you know, we talked about the little blue baggie, it's gonna house your, your data link to software on your USB stick. So essentially all you're gonna need to do is stick this into your laptop. The IQ3 drag dash technically comes pre-programmed, ready to go. You can hook all this stuff up, push the record button and make her run down the track and you know worry about the software part of it later if you absolutely had to. Um, it's always good to test this stuff in the garage before you get to the track because um, a lot of times the race pack guys aren't at every single race. Uh, we do our best, but you know sometimes we can't make it. So. Um, but uh, basically you're going to take this, uh, this USB stick, you're going to stick it into your computer. And from there, when you do that, you're going to have, let's see here. It's your typical installing any sort of software. It's going to pop up and say, you know, new software found, would you like to install it? You're going to push yes. 
Uh, from there, it's going to process, prompt you through a bunch of different, uh, you know, are you sure you want to acknowledge this licensing agreement? Yes, yes, you know, pretty much agreeing to, to all the, the fine print that, uh, you know, companies have to do, you know, when it comes to computers these days. But there is one portion in there that uh, it will prompt you to, and it's going to ask you, what data logger are you using with this Data Link 2 software? Now, this is a very important part of this you have to select the correct configuration file because with the drag dash sportsman and a lot of this other stuff this deal doesn't have its own individual licensing like our u uh, v300 and v500 sds and pro systems do um, we made this a little bit more generic because a lot of people share their files a little bit more than than they used to you know in the bracket world and then pro stuff uh, a lot of people don't want their their files to be to be seen or you know viewed, so you have to have a certain code. Well, the basic drag dash uh, doesn't need that. It just needs a configuration file and the unlock code for it. You just have to tell the software that you that's what you have. So when it says it'll give you a whole list of stuff, you know what which one do you use? All you need to select is the IQ3 drag. You're going to see a bunch of different IQ3s. You're going to see IQ3 display, logger, non-logger. Uh, EFI, there's a bunch of different versions of this dash, a UTV dash, we have one for the Razor, but you want to select the one that says IQ3 drag. And once you do that, um, it's going to finish installing the software, and uh, from there it's going to basically, sometimes it will actually populate the software for you, um, but if not, it's going to create an icon on your computer that's called the data, it says RP and it's the data link program. So when you, you select the, the data link program, and uh, and get it popped up on your computer. You're gonna see kind of a basic a basic screen. Um, you're, it's gonna look kind of all grayed out. And you're man, like I don't know what to do from here. Well, all you really need to do because you installed your licensing keys and all that, it kind of did it for you when you downloaded the software. So what you need to do is, um, if you want to go run it, run it. But if if there's anything you want to just kind of see what it's like, mess around with it, you want to change a parameter or something. Um, you would need to open up your configuration file. And in order to open up your configuration file, all you would need to do is you need to go up to the upper left corner in the software and click File, and then scroll down and see where it says Open Car Configuration. Once you select Open Car Configuration, it's going to ask you which folder. You have downloaded the IQ3 folder, which in there should say IQ3 Config Drag, which is the one that you would need. So you select on Drag, and you're going to click OK. And then from there, you're going to populate a bunch of different little boxes atop, across the top of your screen. Um, there's going to be one that says, well, you'll actually see, it'll say graph in the upper left corner, and then it's also going to say IQ3 config drag and with a little blue wrench. The little blue wrench signifies that you are in your settings window per se. This settings window is going to allow you to make changes, add sensors, remove sensors, uh, change anything on the dash. Anything that you need to do to the data logger is going to be done in this in this deal. So, within these channels, you're going to see one that says IQ3 logger. Uh, you got engine RPM, DS RPM stands for drive shaft RPM. Um, you have a couple ratio channels in there. We have one preset for you, which is engine versus drive shaft ratio, which is how you usually um, look at converter slip. You have a couple spare ratios and a gear a gear indicator. Um, these aren't really set up there for later on if you ever use them. You won't see them when you download a run, so don't worry about it. I get a lot of questions in the field that say, man, I see all this stuff, but I just want it to go away because I don't need it. Well, don't worry. When you download the run, it, you're not going to see it because it's kind of all behind the scenes because it's disabled. But in your settings window, every you can see everything. Um, so then from there, we have a water temp channel. Um, which is you know already pre-done for you. You have a spare analog channel. The spare analog channel can actually, a lot of guys are using it for trans temp. You can, uh, there's a wire in the software, or in the harness, I'm sorry, that allows you to, um, to hook up a trans temp or something like that um, if you wanted to. Um, it's just a matter of purchasing the sensor and, and the connector. Um, from there, you have an oil pressure sensor uh, channel, uh, battery voltage, trans brake. A lot of people ask me, well, what, what do I need to see the trans brake for? Um, if you're running in a bracket class or something like that, and 
you're running delay boxes, um, you can use it for two things. First thing would be to make sure that your delay is correct. If you put 30 in the box and your car is reacting 60 later, you can kind of factor that in. Either something's going on with your delay box or your car just is that much slower than you think and you can dial in your delay box from there. Um, keep in mind, depending on your racing series, um, the way that you hook that up is important. You need to make sure that uh, it doesn't go to uh, you know, the trans brake port on your delay box itself, uh, you want to do it on a separate one so that way, uh, you know, some, some sanctioning bodies are sticklers about it, some aren't, so just depends on what you're racing. Um, and then uh, second thing that you can use it for is uh, zeroing, helping zero your run. We'll get to that when we talk more about the software stuff, but, uh, you know, in a later webinar. But um, that way, so what, what happens is, is basically you push the button and it's gonna put a, a voltage line on the graph. It's gonna run across the graph and when you release it, it drops out. So then you know that's exactly when you lift it off the button versus when your car reacts. So you can zero the run off of your trans brake or you can zero it off of um, your drive shaft or whatever it may be that you decide. So that's in there. And then we also have a dim enable, which uh, you're probably not gonna use. Most people, like if you have a street car, and you turn your headlights on, uh, it will actually dim the dash, kind of like a street car. Um, but that's in there for you as well if you're a, a street racing guy. And then you have a time and a video one. Those are just uh, those are reference points for uh, video integration and things like that that uh, that you can step up to later on. Um, so from there, basically, uh, you also have while we're on this screen here at the bottom, you want to take a look at where it says year, track date and time. Now this is very important because uh, the race pack program actually houses all of your files when you do this. So um, every time you put in a new year, 2017, 18, 19, etc., it's going to create a year folder and then it's going to create a track folder for every track you go to. So Pomona, Vegas, Boise, Dallas, wherever it is, every track you type in will actually house its own folder. So that way when you go back to reference all this stuff, you know where it is and and whatnot. So, but again, we'll discuss that uh, in a different uh, software seminar, but just kind of giving you guys a little bit of a run through. Um, here you also have a set date and time. Uh, depending on what your computer is and what time zone you're in, this might, uh, you might need to set your date and time on your drag dash. If not, um, it'll still work. It just, if you want to reference the correct time and, and whatever, just make sure that uh, your computer time and date is correct and all you'll have to do is take out your SD card, stick it in the laptop and click set time and date. And what that does is it writes a file to the card, you stick it in the you stick it in the data logger, turn the power on and it remembers that and with the internal battery that's inside of it. So you don't have to set it every single race or anything, usually just with initial setup. And then finally you're going to see um, clear data files for memory card if your if your SD card ever gets too full. Um, that's just a quick, easy way to you know clear the file through our actual uh, uh, software instead of you know you can do it on Windows if you know how to do it that way. But we like to have our own button in there as well for you. Um, so and then uh, let's see. Finally, along along the bottom, you have your session run info weather. That's all when you download uh, when you download your stuff. You you're going to input your run information, your time slip information, your weather information, and that's all stored in there. It's just kind of like a digital logbook, basically. So what I'd like to talk about from there would be, uh, you know, like I said, all this stuff is kind of all already pre-set up for you. Now, with it being set up, sometimes, you know, like myself, like in my super comp car, I hate pushing the button because I always forget I'm already, I'm focused on dial-ins and ratios and things like that and delay and what I'm going to do on the starting line and I always forget to push the button. So um, I'll show you a real quick way to, to kind of do stuff like that in the software. So um, in the software, anything that's kind of hard, hard lined into the IQ3 dash itself, um, there's, if you see on the top in the software here, there's a channel that says IQ3 logger. IQ3 logger houses a bunch of information that can do a lot of really cool stuff. So I'm just going to kind of go across the the board here and kind of talk about the first one. When you right click on IQ3 logger, it's going to show you four different pages of the IQ3. Um, like I spoke about earlier, it says that uh, you know we can house up to 20 different things just on the one page. Well, 
we pre-set up the first page for you and even the second page, but if you want to add third and fourth, etc., you would just have to go in and program it. So that's essentially just a matter of uh, following the red line to the box that uh, it's pointing to. You click on it, you can change it to if you want your water in the bottom left instead of, uh, you know, or in the center or whatever. That's all user programmable, but we preset it up for you. And you can see how we preset it up for you. You got engine RPM on the swept tack, um, the actual digital RPM in the middle. Um, you have a gear indicator, the big number, uh, voltage. Uh, and then along the bottom, you have water temp, oil pressure, and then trans brake to see, to show that you're on the button. It's just gonna show a one or a zero. Um, and then uh, there's something you'll see, it'll say default display in, in all of the boxes actually. If that's selected, that means when you first turn on your power, like when you, when you power on the IQ3 dash, just with your master power, that's the one that it's gonna go to first. So usually we like to leave that at number one, so that way, you don't get confused or whatever, so we use, that's how we have it preset up. But technically, you could have your default display be number four if you wanted to. You would just need to change it. Um, so, um, like I said, we'll talk a little bit more about uh, programming your dash at a later date. But I'm just kind of giving you a little run through here. Um, and then across the top, you're going to see the next tab. <coughs> excuse me, the next tab it says warnings. When you click on warnings. It's gonna show you how we have it set up here as well. On the left hand side, you're gonna see oil pressure and coolant temp. These are the warnings that we've already set up for you. Um, and then uh, I think, let me see here. <clears throat> I think the coolant temp one we have set at, uh, at hot at 200 degrees and uh, the low we just have it at negative 100 because usually nobody wants to see a low temperature warning light. So something that you'll just never hit. Um, so, but all that can be user programmed. Um, it's just a matter of clicking on that little box and putting in if you want your oil pressure to light up at 20 PSI versus, you know, I think we have, uh, let's see what we have in here real quick. Let me double check for you. Uh, actually, yeah, we have oil pressure set at 20 PSI from the factory. So if you want it to actually illuminate the light, I know some stalker guys, they hardly run any oil. So um, sometimes it, uh, goes to four pounds of oil. So you can basically change that number to whatever you want. It's all user programmable. When you change it, um, you just always wanna make sure <clears throat> after you click okay to get out of the box to always, anything that you change here, you always have to send the configuration over to the dash via that programming cable that we talked about that comes with the kit. Um, send configuration, you'll see in the box is always in the bottom right corner. Sending it means you're going from the laptop to the data logger. Read configuration just below that means you're going from the, the dash itself to the laptop. If you're not sure what you have the settings and you're, you get confused, if you click read configuration, it's gonna take everything that you have programmed in the dash or the slash data logger and populate it into the laptop. So if you're going from laptop to data logger, you wanna send the configuration. Something uh, to always remember, you're sending it to the dash. So, um, but that's pretty basic. You have two other, <coughs> excuse me, the two other warning lights over there, warning three and four, you can set those for a pan vacuum or RPM, whatever you wanna set, it's all user programmable. So across the, uh, across the top from there, we have uh, kind of the same tab, but it's the shift light tab. Um, this stuff is uh, not really set up uh, per se from us because that can be so many different configurations when you're talking to different cars. So we have it all kind of at 7,000 RPM to where you know usually you're not gonna not gonna hit it. So if you want to go through and change all that stuff, you can change your the LED intervals because these are progressive shift lights up here, or um, you can also program the RPM drop in the change. So um, like if you know you shift from one two and you gotta you're gonna go past the RPM level, you have to tell it how many RPM you're gonna drop, you know, 300, 500, et cetera. But you have shift one, two, three, four, or I'm sorry, one, two, two, three, three, four, et cetera, um, just like any other shift light. But um, like I said, it's all, it's all built in. Um, and then whenever you program that, again, you're gonna wanna make sure that uh, you send the configuration. Always, anything you do here in the laptop, you always gotta send it to the data logger itself. Um, and then uh, we'll talk about one other thing here, um, which would be the dash info page. Um, it's another tab across the top. 
This dash info page holds a lot of the hardware information. So the reason why I want to talk about this is a lot of guys, I know we, I talked about it a minute ago and I forget to push the button all the time. Um, a lot of guys say, can I, do I have to push a button? Can I just instantly start recording? Yes, you can. Um, what I did on, what I do on my cars is I have the data logger start to record off of a certain engine RPM. Um, with this, with my car being a super comp car and I drive it to the staging lanes and on and off and pulling it up and whatnot, I don't want to write a recording every single time I do that. So I make sure that I put the value at something that I'm not going to hit, you know, driving through the lanes. I, what I do is I put it uh, on uh, my burnout rev limiter, uh, which is actually a 6400 in my car. So the way to do that is in that page there, on the dash info page, there's in the custom programming options, there's going to be a line that says uh, number or start recording when channel exceeds value. So you're going to click on that. Um, it looks like I think I have it highlighted in blue on there for you guys. Um, when you do that, just to the right, it's going to say it again start recording when value exceeds. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to type in whatever that value may be. So if it's 2000, 1000, 6400, like I do. Whatever you decide, you just type it in with keypad, so 6400. And then after you do that, again, make sure that you send the configuration over to the data logger. Power on, serial cable hooked up, send the information over to it. Um, you know, that's, that's kind of how, it, like I said, any, any change that you make in the software, you always want to tell the data logger so that way it, it sticks. Um, but uh, basically, uh, you know, you can set that value to whatever you want, so it's, it's you know, up to you. But if you don't want to worry about that, you want to use the button, you don't even have to mess with anything that I just talked about. You can go out there, put it in the car, push the record button and blast down the track. So um, that's a whole nother, a whole nother deal if, if it's something that you want to do. And the cool thing is uh, we're here Monday through Friday, eight to five. Uh, we have sales and tech guys on the phone that are more than happy to help you um, if you get stuck in any of these processes. Um, but uh, basically, after you close out of, of any of this stuff, you always wanna make sure when you're done with everything, just click file and save on the software. Um, you know, just kinda like Microsoft Word in college, I used to never push save and I'd always lose all my papers. So um, I'm kind of a stickler when it comes to save now. So I learned my lesson. But anyways, uh, that's basically a quick little run through of the IQ3 drag logger dash. Um, it's something that I highly recommend. I'm definitely going to put one of these in my car in the off season. I have a little older model. I have the sportsman logger in my car right now. So um, it's something that uh, I think the new IQ3 blue backlight, it's, it's cool looking, it's flashy. It's, it does all the great functions that you're going to need for a bracket setup. And it, uh, it's killer. Uh, everybody, all my friends that uh, are buying them, they say they love them. So um, something I highly recommend for you. Uh, but other than that, um, you know, that's uh, seminar number three, I think it is. And, uh, you know, maybe next week I'll, I'll have a colleague, you know, Todd and I might actually be in the office at the same time. But I uh, just want to thank all you guys. Let's see. I'll see if there's any questions right quick. I don't let's see here. Let's see. Is it going to allow me to see him? Sorry guys, little technical difficulties. I'm when do we come to Chicago? Uh, we will be coming to Chicago, I see you on here, um, for the Chicago Joliet National Event, um, which I believe is mid to early July. So we will be there at the NHRA National Event. Uh, we will have this stuff for sale at the K&N Filters trailer uh, on Manufacturers Midway. A lot of people get that uh, are wondering where we are at NHRA national events these days. Uh, we live on the K&N trailer in Manufacturers Midway. There's a, there's Lincoln Welders, K&N, MSD, Race Pack, Holly. There's a bunch of uh, companies all in the one trailer. So we are there at every national event. So um, come and see us. Let me see if I can find anything else here. Let's see here. There we go. Um, Cole, I like it. Yes, it'll definitely give you style points in the lanes. Um, the price of the IQ3 drag logger dash is uh, uh, with a collar, 
with a two magnet collar, it's uh, 1815, uh, 1815 dollars. Um, it's what is it, 70, 1770, I believe, uh, without the collar. If you're going to get the collar from somebody else, uh, we don't include the collars anymore because so many different people have different sizes, etc., and or they have their own on the car already or whatever. So. Uh, let's see, how often should you update the software? Um, I would recommend checking the software, I don't know, every few months. Uh, there's always things that we find in the software, whether it's uh, a misspelled word accidentally or in the writing of the program or anything like that. So, I mean, sometimes updates won't even have anything to do with the drag dash. It may have something to do with our Road Racing G2X Pro or something that there's a firmware issue or, or something like that that we find. But we update it all the time. And usually in our download section, when you click on it, you can click on the notes, the release notes, and it'll tell you what, you know, what, what's missing or whatever. So um, that's a good question. Um, uh, let's see. When is the software going to be updated? Um, we update and put fixes all the time. Um, we are always working to uh, do some really cool things in the future. Um, I'll leave that one at that. Um, let's see. Um, yep, looks like that should be uh, kind of it from what I see on my on my end. But uh, let's see here. Let me see if I can. I think I had a schedule here to kind of tell you guys what. I don't know what I did with it, but I do remember off the top of my head that next week, uh, week four, we're going to kind of do the same thing with the Sportsman Data Logger, um, kind of an overview, what comes in the box, what it is, how to do a few basic functions, and tell you a little bit about it, and see if that product might be for you, if the drag dash isn't for you, and kind of go from there. Um, but uh, thank you guys very much, and uh, we, we hope to see you uh, next week, Wednesday at 5 o'clock. And uh, go Oilers. <laughs>